it's very commonplace to see clocks, but this was the first one at a football ground anywhere in Britain. One man who remembered the original clock was lifelong Arsenal fan Norman Duncan. In Highbury's final season, he was invited back to the club, some 86 years since his first visit. I uh, first started watching the Arsenal very spasmodically when, uh, when I was about seven. My dad used to take me uh, and sit me on the crush barrier and I just uh, sort of never looked back from then. Those days, uh, three quarters of the people were standing up on the terraces. I never saw any fighting or any scrapping about. But the ground used to get packed. They filled it every week in that good period. And if anybody passed out in the crowd, they just uh, lifted them up and rolled them down over the heads. Everybody passed him down till they got down to the field. And then the first aid men looked after them then. It was unbelievable, the, the, the packing in of the, of the supporters. In March 1935, Highbury recorded its record crowd of 73,295 for the visit of Sunderland. Arsenal were at the peak of their powers and everybody wanted to see them play, no matter what it took. Not even the war could dampen the desire to see the Gunners. And when football resumed, they continued to be big box office. Matches are booked up weeks ahead, and the office staff is kept busy returning thousands of unsuccessful applications. Sporting show business is flourishing. They'd all come back from the war. They'd all last about five or six years, you see, of their football life. And we'd have 70,000 in the ground at Highbury with no trouble, you know, and one copper either side. It was rather, rather nice times, really. Well, I can remember coming here as a boy in the, in the mid-50s, and with 65, nearly 70,000 people to a game. My first game was standing on the North Bank and just being surrounded with a mass of people and the singing and the chanting and it was, you just felt it was a great bonding exercise. This was your family, people you never met, but you felt you belonged to them, they belonged to you. It's a bit like a circus on a match day where everybody starts to arrive, the programme sellers arrive, food arrives, and slowly but surely it just gets assembled like a big circus hitting town. And then of course the circus master arrives with the players. The business has changed quite dramatically over a period of years, but nevertheless the support is still the same and the way the supporters feel about the club is the same. So that electric effect on a match day is still there. Cup fever at Highbury, Arsenal v Liverpool. Supporters of the Gunners trying to kill the Mersey sound with a barrage of rattle. Being a local lad and standing on the terraces, and you know, as I got older I stood up there and my friends stood up there when I was playing. Um, I used to watch my goal scoring here, I was up there. The vocal support used to rebound off the roof really, so um, you know, you get the old shivers down your spine a little bit. Well, I was only five the first time I came here. I decided I was going to be an Arsenal fan. My mum had given me a shirt. I didn't want the same shirt as my brother. He was a Tottenham fan. And we got seats. I think we were in the East Stand. And I spent most of the game looking away from the pitch at all the people. I've never seen so many people in my life. To be honest, my real emotional attachment is to the old hybrid that I grew up with when it was terracing at both ends. Pay cash on the gate. Programme's about 20p. When I first, first started coming, which was 78, 79, that's when I started coming. My dad wouldn't let me come on my own until I was 13, which was March 79. Which was good, because we had a good team then, and Liam Brady was my absolute idol. Oh, what a goal! My father took me, it was a surprise, 1975. And I just remember being just absolutely in awe of the place and I, I, I was probably looking around me more than I was actually watching the game and I remember looking at the North Bank and the North Bank was in sort of full song and I just thought that's where I want to be, I don't want to be up here. Oh, that was delighted and brought Highbury to life. I started going regularly to Highbury when George Graham arrived. I was about 13, 14 and I was just old enough to go on the train, you know, without my parents. And I used to go with a friend to Arsenal. I was a junior gunner until I was about 16, actually, don't tell anyone. And um, I would always go and try and get to the ground when the gates opened, which was, I think, 1.30. And uh, I would stand 
and have this fantastic position in the North Bank. And then at about two minutes to three, some giant would always come and stand right in front of me. And that was it. I would never see very much of the match. When we scored, I would be elated, but I'd half dread scoring a goal because you literally would be moved down a few metres and then back up a few metres. And, and um, I remember, you know, when I'd wave a flag and getting caught in my eye and things like that. So, so it was exhilarating, but it was pretty scary, I, I used to find it. Some fans are Arsenal born and bred, while others have a moment of epiphany that changes their life forever. Arsenal was big in my life for two reasons. In Dennis Compton was my great hero in the 40s, and he played for Arsenal. And then Arsenal played Carlisle United. It was like close encounters. It was really like an alien spaceship arriving in Carlisle, that Arsenal should play Carlisle. And off we go to Carlisle for the third round replay against the Arsenal as the Gunners kick off. A soaring centre deceives McLaren, and Lewis nods it in to put Arsenal one up. Carlisle fight back. The ball comes to Billingham, who passes, and Carlisle are on the attack. A cue dashes in, beats Platt for the ball, and scores the equaliser. Lewis heads, and Logie scrambles the ball in to give Arsenal the lead 2-1. My dad, uh, who was a publican, who left school at 14 and worked in factories, listening, wrote a poem, and he began... There's 11 of you, there's 11 of them, so man to man, you're just the same. <laughs> Can't remember the next lines, but it's copyrighted. <laughs> but that established a link with Arsenal, and you always supported Arsenal. With fans from all over Britain and all over the world, Highbury has been one of the game's most cosmopolitan grounds. Arsenal was one of the first clubs to have a lot of black players uh, on the pitch, particularly with the Rowcastle, Thomas Davis era. And indeed, many more black faces in the crowd. We ha always had quite a continental crowd here, even when English football was supposed to be the preserve of the, the English white male. And I even found coming and standing on the North Bank as a kid that it was OK, you know, it was never any big deal. And I think it's always been quite inclusive. Highbury is a very welcoming place for any religion, any race, any creed. Uh, it really is a tremendous football club. I love this club. It's the first place where I stand there. I watched my first game. And I didn't know where to sit. I was in the wrong place. Arsenal scored. I celebrated. Everyone looked at me. Why are you so happy? Out. So. How close you are to the pitch and the feeling that Highbury is such a comparatively small stadium, even though it's 38,000. And I think the crowd influenced the players very, very strongly here at Highbury, and the players bounce off the crowd. And I've seen them lift players. You feel the fans close to you when you play. You feel them uh, give you some uh, power, you know, like uh, when they, when you, you heard them scream, you know, from the, from the stand, you know, that give you some more. And I think that's a great feeling. I don't forget, we, we were there for Nigel Winterburn's uh, debut and we just thought, who's this bloke, you know? So just before kickoff, there was about 10 of us used to go. We all simultaneously went, Nigel! And he sort of turned around and went like that. And we ended up doing that every home game of his entire career. You always have a player, a spectator uh, kind of a relationship here and uh, because it's so, it's so tight, you know? I've 